Are you, like me, born into a Christian family? The majority of Americans are and get indoctrinated from birth to believe in Christianity. As young children, most of us simply believe what we're taught due to the indoctrination. But real-life experience often shows us that what we were taught as children isn't always the truth. And this video, I'll discuss one recent experience I've had that proves that in... Thanks for stopping by. I'm the curious atheist, but my friends call me Pete. It's been almost two months since I posted my last video. If you follow my channel, you already know why. But if not, let me catch you up on what happened. Almost six years ago, I had a stroke that left me unable to drive a car safely. So my main transportation is an adult three-wheeled Schwinn tricycle converted to electric power. To make a long story short, my 65-pound tricycle hit a fire hydrant at approximately 15 miles an hour. The trike sustained very minor damage because my leg took the impact instead of the trike. The pain was severe and immediate, but hey, I'm a single guy. Instead of calling 911, I rode home so I could put my groceries away. When I dropped my pants to examine the damage, well, it wasn't pretty. But since the bleeding had stopped and no bones were protruding through the skin, I didn't go to the hospital. You see, in that moment, my childhood indoctrination kicked in and I just prayed that God would help me heal. This ended up with me conducting an experiment. People have wondered if prayer truly is helpful, and some have tried to find out through science. Irish physicist John Tyndall did a prominent study in 1872, where his conclusions drew the ire of the Catholic Church. In 1998, Herb Benson, a cardiologist at Harvey University, led what became known as the Great Prayer Experiment. The study was funded by the John Templeton Foundation at a cost of $2.4 million. Atheist YouTuber Matt Delahunty often mentions the Templeton Foundation and this study. But what was the actual study about, and how was it done? The study involved just over 1,800 patients about to receive cardiac bypass surgery. Now this was two decades before I received mine. Patients were divided into three groups. Two groups were told before the surgery that they may or may not be prayed for as a part of the experiment. One of those groups did receive prayers, the other didn't. The third group was told that they would receive prayers, and they did. The prayers started 48 hours before the surgeries and continued for a month afterwards. The effectiveness of the prayer was judged on the percentage of patients with complications compared to the average number of patients with complications. In the two groups who might receive prayer, the percentages were the same as the average patient. But the group that knew they were being prayed for saw an elevated number of complications. This led to the conclusion that patients who were prayed for did not improve. Worse yet, those who knew they were receiving prayers did worse than the average patient. And my entirely unscientific personal experiment had similar results. After the first six days of praying that I would heal, I had to go to the hospital. Despite my attempts at wound care, I could see infection was setting in. As a diabetic, I know serious infections can lead to amputations, and I have no desire to lose a leg. Blood work showed that there was, in fact, an infection. I ended up spending almost a week admitted to the hospital getting around-the-clock antibiotic IVs. 
Once the blood work showed the infection was under control, I was sent home. They discharged me with prescriptions for two antibiotics. I did sustain some nerve damage in the leg, so as the nerves try to heal, they can be quite painful. A follow-up exam showed the infection was still present, so I spent yet another week on antibiotics. Finally, the infection is cleared up, and that's a good thing. At least I won't have to learn how to dance on one leg. The nerve pain is still present, and my doctor informs me that it's complicated by my diabetic neuropathy. And that is why I haven't made a video in so long. The pain prevents me from having the focus to sit down and make a video. Now, there's no telling when the nerve pain will disappear, since the neuropathy exacerbates the issue. So, I'm sucking it up and I'm shooting this video and just dealing with the problem the best I can. After all, I can always edit out the rough spots. So what did I learn from this experience? Just like the Benson study, I learned prayer does not help healing. But does that mean that prayer is useless? Well, not totally. You might be surprised to hear this from an atheist, but there is a benefit to prayer. <laughs> but it's not what you think. Prayer does nothing to help the afflicted one physically. The benefit of prayer is an emotional one, a calming comfort of sorts. It gives the person praying the illusion that they are doing what they can to help the afflicted person. This is a boost to their self-esteem, and so they feel good about themselves. We all need that feeling sometimes. Even in my situation, praying for my own healing, I could see the effect. While physically prayer didn't help, praying before going to sleep helped me emotionally, allowing me to sleep. Mentally, I felt the level of comfort that granted me a certain level of calming that was helpful. But while that's a beneficial thing, it is what is known as a placebo effect. To be honest, I get the same exact benefit from listening to healing music videos on YouTube. And the music frequencies often help me fall asleep much faster. You see, as that study from the Templeton Foundation showed, prayer has no physical benefit. If it did, I wouldn't have required the hospitalization for IV antibiotics. But the placebo effect worked because my childhood indoctrination instilled in my brain that prayer works. So in my moments of pain and emotional stress, my childhood indoctrination kicked in. I sought comfort in prayer because the Bible says we should, and that was drilled into my brain since birth. The effect is like being given a sugar pill and being told it will stop your pain. You think it will help, and your mind convinces you it is. But it's merely an illusion, a magician's trick. And from my lifetime of experience, I can honestly say, so is Christianity. Now I know, the next time I get a serious physical wound, I'll seek immediate medical attention. And I'll leave the illusions to the professionals on the theater stage and the church pulpits. Take care, my friends.